bicycle, you know, perhaps you can identify, you know, um, which bicycle uh, with which certain price tag. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, that if these are the purchases that you have done, okay, in August first, right, you purchase ten, okay. And then another one, you put it another 15, okay? And you know that uh, you know, that from this from this from this 10, the price is 91, and also 9106 for the second for the second order. So how shall we determine the cost of goods sold? So we can just identify directly, yeah, for for 10, for example, yeah. for 10, maybe it can be equal and 1, ringgit and, and 12. Why there is, why there is uh, certain, uh, certain bike is using 91, the others are using 106? Yeah, because you can identify that. Because you don't sell that in lump, in in group. You know, you 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 basically sell it individually. So once you sell it individually, you can also at and at the same time you also know what is the price for each that individual part. So that's why that's why we can we we can get the actual amount here. Okay? So that means for the eight byte actually, this is the eight byte, yeah? number one until number eight. These are the actual byte, and these are the price that you pay when you purchase the byte that it was cost $90, or Because again, if you are using 54, for example, you can't do this. Yeah? If you're using 54, you are basically you put everything. For example, if, if all the items are categorized as item A, for example, so all the items are given that price, and you are, and so that means if you sell that product, for example, you take from the one that you have purchased earlier. So that is the difference between between those. Okay. So that and and also, okay, by using this system, you can also know the exact price unsold inventory. Okay, this is basically unsold inventory. Yeah, you have twenty five. Okay, you have twenty five, and then you sold. Okay, you sold twenty and left fifteen. A uh, five, sorry, and left. The far. And from the far, you can also identify the price of each of each far. Yeah. Okay. So, so same it goes. Okay, if you, you know, um, if you purchase more and you start selling more and so on. Okay. So it's the same basis. Okay, just multiply by the actual uh, by the actual price the, or the actual cost that you pay for that particular goods. Yeah. Okay, so if there is a, this is the, the total of purchases, and these are the total of goods sold. Okay, and these are the price. So you can determine is that cost of goods sold is two five. Two. Yeah. Two, five, two. This one is not the total of cost of goods sold for that month. This is on that particular day. On that particular day. So that means to get the cost of goods sold for the entire month, you have to add all. Okay, we have to add all. Okay. Right? So how about the in the ending the ending uh, inventory? The ending inventory is the this one, yeah. The ending inventory is 
Okay, and the inventory, this one is still uh, unsold. This is unsold, and then you have to add another column, okay, to tell that this should be called this. Uh, two of them unsold, yeah, and three of them is unsold, and then so the inventory balance should be zero. And then in August 3rd, you have purchased 15, and then you sold 12, okay? You sold 12, and then you sold another two, so this one also gone. Yeah, this one also gone. So, how about, how about this one? 15 coming from this one, and three coming from this. So that means the ending inventory will be 5 times 115 plus 7 multiplied by 119. So this should be the total of ending inventory. Yeah, ending inventory which is unsold. Yeah, unsold at the end of at the end of August. Yeah? And I think this one should be, is it not? I think that's why it should be. I think maybe this is the figure. Okay. This should be the figure. Maybe you can start there. Yeah. But I think this is the figure. Should be the figure. Okay. Um, yeah, so once we got the figure, once we got the figure, the cost, uh, yeah. So the cost of goods sold is actually 4582, yeah? This plus this. And this amount will go to the comprehensive income statement. And this figure, the ending balance, will go to the, comp to the statement of financial position or balance sheet. Yeah? Right? So, so that data figure that you will get yeah, if you use a specific identification. This is the detail of the transaction. Yeah. These are the accounts involved. <coughs> For example, when you purchase, purchase on credit, yeah? if you purchase on credit, this is the account involved, inventory and also account payable. When you sell, sell on credit, these are the account involved, account receivable and also sale. So when you sell, when you sell the product, you have to credit inventory because the process of selling inventory will reduce the inventory. Yeah? So that's why you credit inventory. Okay. So an additional purchase of inventory, additional in inventory, you debit, and then you credit account account pay. So these are the account that you bought. Okay. Five-four method. Yeah? Five-four method is almost like a specific identification. Okay. Um, but um, it is not. It is not as specific as the previous method, where um, it goes basically like this. If the company purchase the goods right in that month and start selling after that, so the items are taken from the whole uh, amount that are available on that particular time, okay, uh, and also uh, the earliest one that are available in that, in the, uh, in the inventory. Yeah. So for example, that if they sell 10, for example, the 10 will get, I mean, if they, if they sell, uh, how much they're selling? Okay, if the company sell 20, for example, okay, okay. before we go into detail, 
So if the company sell 20 bikes, if you're using the first in, I mean first in, first out, so the first 10 will come in from this one, yeah? From the beginning inventory. And the next 10 will be the next 10 will be coming from from this. So the cost of food sold is basically 10 times 91 and also 10 times 106. Yeah? So that should be the, the cost of food sold. Yeah? 10 multiplied by 91 and 10 multiplied by 106. And if there, if there are some purchases after that, right? So just add on to the list of purchases. And if any goods sell, okay, after that as well, so you have to use the first in first out because this is basically finished. So left with this one, yeah? Five left. So that means you have to take the five from here and 18 from this one to get the cost of goods sold amount. Right? So the cost of goods sold for that particular month is basically the total of all these. Yeah? The total of cost of goods sold for that particular month is the total of this. Yeah? This one plus, plus this one. This is on, on that particular day. So, and, and at the end of the month, there are 12. Right? There are 12 unit inventory. This is, this is what we call here the ending inventory. Right? The ending inventory, 12 unit, okay? And then it pays on the. So, 12 unit coming from where? Coming from. Two of this one, yeah? yeah. The ending inventory, two times this one, and also and ten, ten times <coughs> times this one. So this is the ending inventory is one four two zero. So, you, so that means you get all the figure that you need for the income statement. You got the cost of goods sold of four five seven zero and this one. So you reckon that that's a different figure, yeah? Different figure from specific. For the from um, from the previous method, yeah, and also the first in first out method, yeah. So different figure for this one, and also different figure for the incomes for the uh, ending ending event. And this is how the transaction full transaction is the same as this now. Merchandise inventory. Okay, when you purchase the inventory, you debit. Okay, and again, when you purchase them on credit, as a comparable to what? When you sell on credit, they come receivable and sales. If you sell the goods, so that means you have to reduce the inventory and add the cost of goods sold again at the, at the price. Okay. So, Now you go to last last in first out. See what are the characteristics of last in first out? The cost of goods sold is basically based on the recent cost, and the ending inventory is based on the oldest cost. Yeah. So I did, I, I purposely did not discuss this in detail because uh, I mean uh, if. Uh, if you want to identify, you can identify it's quite straightforward, quite easily. And, uh, and also, you will not find this in Malaysia because uh, it's, 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 it's totally prohibited uh, for any company uh, to use this method uh, for publication. Right. Okay, now, weighted average. This is a formula that you have to understand, right? How? Because you have the issue now is that how to determine the cost of the inventory. Yeah? The cost of the inventory. Right. So the cost of inventory is using this formula, cost of good available for sale divided by unit, unit on health, right? On unit on hand on the date of 
the bit of sell. Yeah? So it's same. Yeah? So basically, the, the price, the, the, the total cost divided by unit available. So we take, for example, the case is now same, the, the buy, yeah, for the, for the buy, yeah, we have this. Um, purchase of 20 buy. And then, okay, so that's why if you're using the moving average, it's very challenging if you want to do it manually. Uh, but if you use a computerized system, it can help, I mean, it can really help you to do it, you know, because it's a bit taxing, it's a bit challenging, because you have to determine the price when there is a changes in total of good available for sale. Just imagine, for example, if uh, if you're selling at the retail shop, you know, the clients are queuing, you know. If you really follow this method, you know, every sale, and then you have to come, yeah. and then you have to come up yeah. because you have to determine the the cost of, I mean, the, the total good available on that particular time. You know, then only you can determine the cost. So Different, yeah, different because after transaction, because the, the nominator is this one. The denominator is this one. Yeah? So this one keep on keep on changing. Yeah? This one keep on changing. So then there is there's a change, for example, put available and also the unit, uh, I mean the price and also the so you have to come up with a new with the new uh, cost for that for that for that. Uh, but again uh, for the sake of this discussion you know uh, maybe we can uh, maybe we can look into this okay um, so again how to determine the cost so you have to total you have to total First, we have to compute the better average cost per unit of item in inventory. So that means cost of goods available, 2,500. 2, okay, there's a total there. And the total unit is 25. Okay, 25, and this one is 2,500. There you've got that figure. You got a hundred. This is the main issue that you are looking for. Right? You are looking for the hundred there. Once we have the hundred figure, so just multiply by the unit sold. So if the unit sold is twenty, for example, this is basically the cost of goods sold. Yeah? You don't have to calculate at I mean after purchase. You only have to calculate where you want to make a sale because. When you want to make a sale, you want to determine the cost of goods sold. At that particular point of time, you have to determine the, the cost. Then you have to go back to your record and determine the cost for the average cost per unit. Yeah. Again, how about the inventory balance? Are we, which figure that we use to determine the inventory balance? Yeah, what, what price that we base on? The ending inventory. The ending inventory always at its, at its purchase price. Always at the cost. Okay, the, the ending inventory is always at the cost. At the purchase price. Only the cost of the sold. <coughs> that that change based on the this. <coughs> this is the summary of um, of um, of the um, the impact of net income off of a different method. Okay, so. Now I hope you can see why there is an option there. Why people uh, are given choice to choose. 
Yeah? Maybe some of you may have to, I mean, may have your own justification to choose which method yeah? to use to determine the, the cost of book so. So if you use the first method, for example, <coughs> you like it? You like that method? You like that method? Depend on your product. how you going to use this figure. If you think that, um, you know, if you think that, because, again, everybody likes high net income, right? What is the implication of having high net income? Okay, there's a positive side of it. How about the negative side of it? Yes. So, I mean, as a CEO or as the president of, of that company, you have to decide whether you want to please the government <laughs> by paying more tax or you want to please, uh, you know, um, yeah, sorry. You want to please the government, or you want, uh, or you want to avoid paying tax. Yeah. So if you want to please the government and also please the shareholders, so maybe the five four is the best method, right? Okay, because it gives you the highest net income. But if you think that you don't want to pay, you know, that much tax, and also since. The majority of the ownership is 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 you and maybe your family and doesn't they don't really mind, you know how will be the bottom line is. So that means just keep it to the lowest and maybe you can go to the the lowest one. Lifeo, but lifeo is banned, so that means you cannot use lifeo. So that means maybe you can go to the to the weapon to the weapon average. Um, yeah, and also some may have their own justification. For example, that depend on the industry that you are in. Uh, you know, maybe if you are running a Tesco company, for example, which method is more appropriate? Yeah, five four might be more appropriate. Yeah, as compared to specific <coughs> justification, right? So if you are the what um, uh, Toyota agent, for example, or dealers, for example. Yeah, for all this machine, big machine, and you know, automobiles, cars, for example, specific identification might be also relevant. And also, um, I mean, to my surprise, Toyota, okay, Toyota, uh, Toyota, what the company that? that United. United Motor Work, UMW, United Motor Work, yeah? United Motor Work. Yeah, I think to my surprise, they use better average. Yeah. And the reason why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but not, not, okay, so I'm sorry, maybe I can take that word back. Uh, one of the method is better average. So that, I mean that, no, that doesn't mean that you, have, you are confined to use only one method. You may choose more than one method based on based on the nature of the product. If you have, for example, in your segment of business, you have cars. Maybe for car, we use a specific identification. But you know, if I mean, maybe for the UM UM W, we has it's a common rate. Yeah, I think it has many subsidiaries. Yeah, from tractors up to even the services. Yeah. For services, it deal with a lot of parts. 
small, small part, for example. So maybe for the smaller part, maybe they would go for the weather average. So depends on it depends on the nature of, 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 of how much. Yeah, weather average smooth out. I mean the the price the price changes. Um, maybe again quite suitable um, for <coughs> Again, for in accounting, this is one of the basic principles that you have to apply what you call it, consistency. Are you allowed to change as you like? Maybe they say we have too much net, too much profit, for example, we change. <laughs> we change to another method. Are we allowed to do that? I mean, are we allowed to do that? Yes. Yeah. Based on the accounting standard, yes. I mean, this account, based on company laws, corporation law, you are allowed to, but at, at an expense, in a certain expense. Um, sometimes you have to really consider whether is it worth it, because you have to pay a lot to the, to the auditors, right? To the auditors, because we have because if you change one method to the others, you have to tell the world the impact of that new method that you use. Not only in this year, but retrospectively. You have to show the impact for the last five years. So you have to, we call it, restate. Yeah, you have to restate the financial statement and show the effect of the new method that you use. So I think if you feel that you know it's, it's worth it, go ahead. You know, but if not, maybe you just continue with the method that that I mean, that we use. So that's why we call it. We have to be consistent. You know, we have to be consistent on which method that we use. Okay. Um, maybe maybe we have um, a, another concept. Another concept of, of accounting that you also have to adhere is what we call this uh, conservatism. Yeah. Conservative. We must be, be conservative in our, in, in our uh, reporting. So, for example, that um, it happened, the cost of the inventory have changed. Have changed. Due to several reasons, you know, maybe due to the economic uh, downturn or any uh, any other reason, you know, maybe even um, uh, maybe the product itself it become obsolete, for example. If the value, if the value of the inventory is lower than the cost that the company pay to the supplier, you have to change the price. That's why this is you know, one famous um, uh, what we call concept that we use in accounting is the LCM. You must always recognize this uh, either of these costs at a lower of low. Which one is the lower? Which one did you go? So, for example, that if to, if when you purchase, yeah, when you purchase the good in um, second of February, and it costs one hundred ringgit. And on fourth of May, for example, the goods obsolete or you know, obsolete, for example, and in the market it only costs eighty. It only costs eighty. Yeah. That means, yeah, when you want to close your account. Maybe the date might not be appropriate. Let's say that on 28th of February, that you want to close the account. When you want to close the account, you check that in the market, the, the cost or the value of this product actually just 80. That means in the balance sheet or the 
or the statement of financial position, you have to record the inventory based on 80. Based on 80. If, for example, when you purchase is still 100, on the day a value depreciate, okay, the inventory yeah, depreciate, for example, up to 120, you have to record at the 100. That's why the LCM, a lower cost for market. We have to choose the lower between this value. So that's the that basic principle which I think is good to know, okay? But maybe this is the work of the accountant to, okay? uh, to, uh, uh, to deal with. Yeah? But that is a principle there. Eh? There's a principle to guide you if, if, if the value of that inventory change, yeah? either appreciate or depreciate. Okay. Um, I don't know this whether make is help or the other way around, but you know, uh, it, but we can use this to summarize what we have learned today. Actually, if we make a mistake, yeah? if we make a mistake, for example, that okay, now we have to. You have to remember the earlier slide, one of the earlier slides. Still the formula of we determine the cost of goods sold. Remember? Yeah? Okay. What if you understand earning inventory? Understand means that it should be 100, but you just write 50. It should be 100, but you mistakenly, but by mistake, you just wrote 50, for example. What that happened? If ending inventory is lowered, is understood by 50, for example, so that means, how about the cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is, is higher than what it should be. I try, you know, I try to use this uh, formula. Okay. How about this one? Remember how we record the ending, the ending inventory? We record the ending inventory in the in the, in the uh, statement of financial position based on the amount of inventory unsold at the end of the period. Yeah, at the end of the period. So, if we understand the ending inventory, we also understand the asset. Yeah? We, we also understand the asset and also understand the equity. Okay, maybe the asset is clear cut. How about the equity? How it can understate the equity? Same goes to overstate ending inventory, this other way around. Okay, if you if you overstate ending inventory, so the, the amount of here on the on the uh, balance sheet, yeah, will be overstated. And again, if you overstate, yeah, if you overstate the ending inventory again. So that means that you will understate the cost of books sold. Yeah? Understate the cost of books sold. So if you understate the cost of books sold, you are overstate the net income. So that's why I think you have a group. You know, maybe you can go through this. And that. that will hopefully uh, can enhance your understanding on the importance of it. Um, okay, asset and equity, if you go to the um, balance sheet, yeah? if you go to the balance sheet or, or statement of financial position, statement of financial position, here we have asset, we have here liability,
liabilities and and equities. So in the equities, we have all the retail earnings, we have all the shareholders equities, hmm? all that. And net income is part of retail earnings. Net income is part of retail earnings. Okay. Why you also need to understand the concept of inventory? Because if if you really um, analyze it well, you can also tell the performance of this company, okay, by using this ratio. What we call this inventory turnover ratio. If you use this formula, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory, which is beginning plus uh, any inventory multiplied, I mean, divided by two. From the ratio, you can tell how many times a company turn over its inventory during a period. Do you think that you wish a company that you want to invest in or you want to be an, have an interest in they should have a higher turnover or lower turnover? Higher. higher turnover because it shows the active, you know, how active the company is in terms of the rolling is yeah. uh, So another is this also important by using this inventory, right? You can know the number of days sales in inventory. Yeah? It basically reveal how much inventory is available in terms of number of days of sales. Do you like to invest a company that uh, hold their inventory longer than what it should be? Yeah. So maybe you may use this uh, ratio, we call it, yeah, ratio, to know, for example, you know, how long on average the company keep their inventory? How many days? So now again, this is another example of the other conservatism that we discussed just now, the LCM. Uh, Market price lower than cost. When the market price is lower than the the cost, you should we should write at the at the lower at the lower price, which is market price. Yes. Then what if uh, uh, if like we just want to make a provision, let's say that we can predict that in future our stock will obsolete, then can we uh, make a provision? For stock for that particular stock. Okay, in certain circumstances, I think that normally coming from the auditor. Maybe the auditor would advise, for example, you know, looking at the nature of looking at the nature of in of the um, of the product of the inventory that you have is is good if you make a certain provision. For um, that in the future the product may be obsolete, maybe depreciate in value. For example, that if your turnover is more than one year, for example, for example big machine, you know, the expensive car, for example, you know, maybe that you tell that okay, maybe today the the, the value is one million, yeah, one million. <coughs> In the future, okay, in the future maybe the value will depreciate, for example, for hundred, for eight hundred thousand. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, I think if if the accountants, if the auditor urge the company to do so, 
you know, maybe they can consider about that. But according to the accounting standard, we always look at the value at the, um, you know, at the, at the end of the year, end of the year. Because again, if you look at the concept of balance sheet or statement of financial position, it tell you the value or the value of that asset on that particular day. We don't really, you know, we don't really bother, you know, even what will be happening in the following day. But again, using the conservatism, I think it's good. I think, I think we love to have, you know, many company apply that concept. That will, that mean, that mean. The company are really honest, you know, to tell what is really happening, what is really the, the, the position of the asset that they have at the moment. You know? uh, maybe this is the, the value, but again, because when you close the account, it will be another year. So it's too long to wait for another year. So why not we recognize the potential loss, okay, that may occur before we close our account at the end. So uh, uh, to, uh, to, to me, I, w I would say that uh, the, the company are, is not required to take into consideration. And uh, that is a strong recommendation. You know? If for example, the auditor say that, do this or I will not sign. <laughs> so if you are in that position, you have to, you know, you have to follow. So that's why I think auditor is the king. <laughs> auditor is the king. You know, if they if they feel I mean if they feel that because they're going to put their signature there, so they don't want to put you know uh, their signature at risk. So as much as possible, they want to ensure that everything is abide by the according to the laws. Okay, I think maybe the last uh, the last slide. Um, okay, this is the situation. You may not have the data, the record that help you to to estimate, yeah. to estimate or to determine the cost of good so yeah. cost of good so. So one way to help you to determine the cost of good so is working backward working backward, where you can determine the gross profit. Because, again, um, for those who are familiar with this uh, financial statement analysis, sometimes you can tell what is the gross profit for a certain company. Uh, for a certain company. Um, for example, that um, we can tell that for example, certain uh, semiconductor companies or IT-based company, maybe their cost of maybe their uh, gross profit, you know, go, I mean gross profit, you know, maybe about um, about how much? About um, gross gross profit, maybe about uh, six forty forty percent, forty percent. So if you can know what is the cost of goods sold, for example. So, based on that, the cost of goods sold is 40%, right? So you can, you can work forward, back, I mean backward. For example, that you can determine the gross profit is 35, 35%, and you can determine the estimated cost of goods sold of 65%. And from there, you can determine the estimated cost of cost of uh, ending ending uh, inventory. You start with the beginning inventory, and then you add the net purchases. Then you can get the cost of good, goods available, and then the estimated cost of goods sold. To get the estimated cost of goods sold, you just take the average of that, yeah? based on your experience, based on your experience, this is how the gross profit lies, okay? The gross profit is basically 35%, okay, of the, of the total sale, 
So from this, you can know the estimated cost of the soul, 65. And from this, maybe we can determine the estimated cost of handy inventory. Because uh, again, this may be applicable to a situation that everything is burned down, everything is lost, and you cannot determine how much it really, uh, how much uh, is basically the, uh, you know, for example, all the entire warehouse is, is burned down. So everything is gone. So you can't really make a physical check out and, and, uh, and uh, check, for example. So you can't determine the, the exact amount of any inventory. So in that case, maybe using this format, this formula markup. But again, by using the computer accounting system, maybe you, I mean, maybe it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's not okay to put down, but, <laughs> but, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, the data is safe. It's, yeah, because again, computer system can do this. Okay, uh, I think uh, that's it.